everybody. I'm Yolanda Moore, two-time WNBA champion, author, and speaker. Well, I was born and raised in Mississippi, a small town called Port Gibson, Mississippi. Um, population probably about 3,000, maybe. That's probably stretching it. Um, just spent a lot of time outside playing basketball, learned a game at the age of eight, nine years old, and just... Uh, Grew up playing sports. I played a lot of sports, but basketball was like my my first love. So, um, grew up on a farm. Did the that whole thing with the the milking the cows and the you know all that. Learned how to drive on a tractor. <laughs> so I'm a real country girl. Um, but basketball was like my thing. Once I learned to play, I played all the way up through grade school, middle school, and high school. And you know it took me all the way to the WNBA. And now I'm here. Well, I went to uh, I went to college at Ole Miss, the University of Mississippi, which was not too far from uh, where I grew up in Port Gibson, and I chose it because it wasn't too far away from home. Um, my college experience it was a good one, but it was uh, it was kind of difficult just because my freshman year of college I uh, suffered a knee injury, which was the first time I'd ever been hurt ever in my life. So that was kind of hard for me to deal with, and I was diagnosed with a degenerative uh, arth arthritic disease. In my knees and told at the age of 18 that I shouldn't play because by the time I was 30 I wouldn't be able to walk. Um, not only that at the age of 18 I became pregnant with my first daughter. So of course you know I had the naysayers coaches and things like that telling me that pretty much my career was over but I was able to bounce back from that went on to be all conference all SEC um, All-American honorable mention. My senior year uh, actually my junior year of college I had a second knee surgery and then on my senior year of college I had a third knee surgery. And um, the end of my senior year, I became pregnant with my second child. And so pretty much everybody had written me off. So it was um, emotionally and psychologically, it was very uh, difficult because basketball was my life. It was what I had planned to do. And so I just saw my life come to an end because I didn't know anything else. Um, I was banking on basketball to provide for my children. And now, you know, coming up with the third knee injury and, you know, being pregnant again, you think that, or well, I thought, and other people thought too, that it was just pretty much a done deal. But um, when they announced that the WNBA was starting in 97, it was like, okay, that's me. I'm going to be in there. You know, I saw that picture of Lisa Leslie in Jet Magazine holding up her jersey with the number one on it. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be there. Well, um, when the league first started, the WNBA teams were owned by the NBA teams. So, of course, we were affiliated with the Houston Rockets, and the organization was great. I mean, they gave us... Everything that the Rockets had access to, we had access to. So we were pretty much treated like, you know, like celebrities, like rock stars. Now, you got a group of women, a group of grown women who everybody in their own respect were superstars wherever they came from, college or overseas. When Cynthia Cooper got into the league, she was 34 years old. She had been playing overseas in Italy for like the previous 10 years and had been an Italian league all-star and scoring champ. So she came in with her you know, I'm Cynthia Cooper cape on. And then we had Cheryl Swoops, who everybody knew who she was. You know, she was like the Air Jordan of, of women's basketball. And then, of course, Tina Thompson, who had a stellar career at USC. Um, so you put all those people in the mix. Plus, we had our overseas uh, ladies who came from overseas, uh, Jeanette Arcane. She's like an, a, a three or four time Olympian in Brazil, holds some kind of, you know, the leading score in the history of the Olympic team for Brazil. So everybody that came there, you have other people like myself who were stars on their respective teams. So we all come there with the same thing in mind. I'm about to be, you know, this is my time to shine. But it just wasn't, it wasn't like that. I mean, we weren't Girl Scouts, of course. Um, there were things, there were issues, you know, people having to put their egos in check, vying for attention, which everybody got. But the thing that I love the most about being a part of that team and a part of that organization was the fact that when we stepped on that court, it did not matter what was going on, if there was an argument before or what was said in the paper about this person or that person, we stepped on that court, we were all one. And so that's what I loved about Tina and, and playing with Cheryl and, and all of those girls and especially Cynthia. All egos were put aside once that ball was tossed in the air and we had on everybody had on their commons uniform. Nothing else mattered.
Well, it was it it was good for me on two two levels. Number one, I wasn't supposed to be on the team. That's number one. Um, my college coach, Coach Chancellor, who was the coach of the Houston Comets, had told me not to come to the tryouts. And this was two days before the actual tryout was to you know was to take place. And his words were, you know, we've drafted this pr player who's six two and this player who's six five, and you know, you just don't have the height. God just didn't bless you with the height, and you know, you're not gonna get enough playing time, or you probably won't even see any playing time. So don't waste your time. Basically, he told me, and these were his words. You know, you have a snowball's chance in hell of making the team, so don't come. You should try to, you know, go coach or do something else. And um, so having to do, having to hear that from him. A person who knew me, who I played for, and, you know, was all everything for your team just a year before, you know, we're not too far removed from you having coached me and, and me being a star for you. And so that to me was, um, I was pissed to say the least, of course. I was hurt and very, very bothered just because I didn't know where that came from. But I went anyway, just because that's me. I made up my mind that that's, going, that's what I was going to do. I'd worked out, I was confident, and, you know, I went. And there were 200, like 225 women there um, trying out for a team, and there were only four spots. So I was one of the four who made it. So having to go through that and win a championship for me was very personally gratifying. Now, for the team, because Cheryl was pregnant um, when the season started. I think she only played, like, the last... Uh, six weeks or so of the season, they had counted us out. Um, no way we we're going to win. Houston was going to win. Cynthia was old. That's what they were saying. Cynthia was old, and nobody knew all the other players on the team. Tina was fresh out of college. They didn't know what kind of beast she was going to be. So um, for us to win, literally, they picked New York and L.A. were the teams that, you know, the WNBA promoted and that everybody around the country was saying because they had Lisa Leslie in you know LA and then New York because it was New York Liberty and they had the guard and they had the Knicks behind them and all that so those were the two teams that that the league and everybody else were vying for were championing we were like the underdogs that first year so for us to go through that and and win a championship on that level was very you know very exciting it was history you know we made history like nobody else can say can can say that they were the first ever WNBA, you know, WNBA champions. And so when we came back the second year, we were even better. We had the best record in the league, 27 and 3. So, I mean, and we were just running through people. So that was fun. I mean, it's hard enough to win one championship, but then to win two, and then they went on to win two more. So to win the first four championships in the history, you know, ever for a professional franchise is just unheard of. Um, we talk, you know, every now and again, saying hi and bye on, you know, via social media, things like that. But everybody's pretty much those. Some people, I think Tina's the only one still playing right now. She's playing for Seattle and um, Cynthia's coaching Cheryl's. I think last year she played, um, she has businesses, and the people who are overseas are the ones that I talk to a lot more, like Wanda Guyton, she was on that team. Um, she was our starting center that first year, and then that second year she hurt her back really bad. Um, so she's overseas in Germany coaching, and Jeanette Arcane, and uh, she's still playing over in Brazil. And So yeah, through social media, Facebook, Twitter, things like that, yeah, we keep in touch. Um, I have four beautiful children. My oldest daughter is actually a sophomore in college, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> um, my book, You'll Win If You Don't Quit, just released, and um, it kind of chronicles my journey from Port Gibson, you know, growing up in poverty and overcoming those, those things, um, growing up without a father and dealing with self-esteem issues and all that kind of stuff. And having to overcome the knee injuries and, and trying to balance school and sports and motherhood in college to be able to overcome that and get to the WNBA, um, that's what the book is about. I used uh, my life to try to teach other people how to, well, not so much teach, but just to show them that 
no matter what the circumstances, whatever it is that you want to do, you know, that dream that you have on the inside of you, you can do it regardless of the, you know, of the obstacles and just to not to to not ever give up. Um, and that's really the book was motivation. I use it as motivation for myself when I wrote it to kind of um, help me out of a, a situation. I had to think back on a time when I was successful. And so that's the time that I thought of, you know, how I was able to overcome all this stuff that I had to overcome to get to the WNBA. And so it's so applicable to other areas of, you know, of my life. And so um, I just wanted to share my story to, with the hopes of, of helping other young girls, young women, um, whether it be in business, sports or what have you, to just really focus on what it is that you really, really want to do and try to map out a plan to get you there. Um, the book was actually written six years ago and it was written in 24 hours because like I said, I'd just come out of a really bad situation relationship. And um, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, God, how did I get here and how do I get out of here? And so I, that's when that I had to reflect on a time when I was successful, when I experienced, you know, a great amount of satisfaction and fulfillment in my life. And it was that, you know, that time when I played in the WNBA. And I just thought back to what did I do to overcome, you know, the knee injuries? What did I do to overcome all of the naysayers? How did I get myself focused enough, you know, to not think about the fact that I had, I was a single mom, teenager, and, you know, trying to get myself together, trying to get through college. And then you get pregnant again and you have knee surgery again and you still don't quit. You know, like, how was I able to do that? And so the book was actually my thoughts on paper to me. It wasn't a book for other people. It was like for me so that I could remind myself, you've done it once so you could do it again. And, um, you know, six years ago, I wrote it 24 hours and I really didn't do anything with it. I just kind of got it out and used it for myself. And then just fast forward to now and God plays different people in my life who inspired me to, you know, to, you need to tell your story, you need to tell your story, but you need to be more open. You know, you write a book, you got to tell the whole story. Otherwise, people don't get it. You can't just give bits and pieces. And so I was at a point in my life where I was ready to share some, you know, those really deep hurts because you hear it all the time, you know, athletes and entertainers or anybody who's successful, they, they have a lot of things that they have to overcome. And not all the time are we very open with those things. But I think in being open and being honest about what really happened or what you really had to go through or what the emotions were that you really felt are what helps other people. And so... Um, the process, I didn't really experience any writer's block per se, because when I sat down and wrote the book, I just got it all out. Um, but fast forwarding to now and having to release it, I had to, to share more of me for the book to actually be able to, to help somebody else. Um, Everyday Publishing Group is a uh, per publishing company that I started with um, Jermaine J. Everyday. Smith, and he's a, a playwright. He's uh, also a radio. He has his own radio show, Everyday Radio. And we um, started the publishing company to get our own works out there, obviously. Um, but it's all about ownership. He's big on ownership. I'm big on ownership and entrepreneurship. Um, and the company, we're able to focus on getting people's stories out there, starting with our own. Our focus is on, you know, empowering people empowering informing educating and so the reason the publishing company came about was to be able to do that in a positive way and you know kids don't need to always hear about the club and the street and the that they get enough of that on reality tv there are some people out there who need to see you know other young people share their stories in a positive way put a positive spin on things um and of course we do take on other authors but not at the present time we're starting with ourselves but the goal is to be able to get other people's stories out there in a positive way i am the face of everyday for women perfume and it is uh actually owned by jermaine smith it's his perfume um and it's the the message behind the or the the motivation behind the perfume is that uh, is to promote the everyday woman 
you know, the single moms who are raising four kids or and going to school and working a job, um, want to feel beautiful, want to be appreciated, you know, want to feel like a lady. And that was the purpose of, of the perfume, to promote the everyday woman. You see ads where uh, celebrities are, are marketing perfumes or it's started by a celebrity. And women, everyday women identify with other everyday women, you know, so th I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, because I'm an everyday woman. I have four kids. I'm still in school, you know, in grad school pursuing a PhD. I own my own business. I'm a writer and I do all those things. I want to feel beautiful and I want to feel pretty and I want to, you know, I want to smell good in the process. So <laughs> it was a good fit. Well, the book is actually available on my website at YolandaMoore33.com. It's also available um, at the JEveryday.com website. Um, you can actually go on Facebook, on my uh, Facebook page, which is Facebook.com forward slash YolandaMoore33 and purchase the book there. Um, when it, it will be available at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. And uh, some independent bookstores are going to carry it as well. First of all, you gotta have a vision. You gotta have a vision for your life. You gotta, you know, figure out where it is that you are and where you want to be, and try to get figure out how to get there. Um, I think identifying your true passions, the things that you really, really, you know, deep down want to do. Because I think I feel like if you pursue what it is that you're passionate about, when the obstacles come, you won't give up so easily. Um, that's I'm, I'm really big on doing what you love. I feel like if, if more people did what they loved, then we'd have a lot more happier people in society. There are so many people who get up every day dreading going to work, you know, crying. I was one of them. Um, and nothing brings you fulfillment like doing what you truly, truly love. So if I had to leave any kind of advice um, or give any kind of advice, it would be to figure out what it is that you really want to do and just do it. Just, Just do it. They can go to my website at YolandaMoore33.com again on Facebook, Twitter at YMoore33, and at Time, Time Out with Yo, or they can email me at info at YolandaMoore33.com.